We are two friends in fiber coming to you from Manitoba, Canada, currently located in Winnipeg, Manitoba, in Jocelyn's apartment. Because Diana has a car. Uh, it's episode 130. Oh, man. 136. Six. 136. Did I not just ask like a half hour ago what episode we were recording? Uh, yeah. That's okay. I also had to look it up. That's fine. Uh, if you are a returning listener, I promise to continue to mess up the podcast intro every time. If you're new, this is not unusual. <laughs> Standard operating procedure. We are oh, professionals. Super profesh. Uh, I am Justin. My co-host is Diana. And technically we are a knitting podcast, though heavens knows we get distracted all the time. So Diana's going to let everybody know what we're going to try to cover this week. And then we're going to see how long it takes my very over-caffeinated butt to <laughs> derail us. We've got some what's in our cup, cool threads, woolly workings, uh, spinning yarns, yarn on the go, wool gathering, literature, and probably events, even though we didn't talk about that or put it in the show notes. That's one of those ones where I'm almost in the mind where we should just let events go, because I can just mention them when they come up when I'm doing things, and we can just put them into wool gathering. This is, how we, this is how we make decisions, people. Works for me. We have no events this week. Done. <laughs> we have well, extra sure. wool gathering. We'll put them somewhere else. It's good to go. Well, I'll end up getting distracted. I'll end up talking about it early anyway. You know me. I know this me. This is true. Why would we try to pretend I am anything other than haphazard at best? Guys, I was playing Blood Bowl before this game. If you don't know what Blood Bowl is, that's totally okay. It's fantasy football where my tree man punches people. And he got the ball. He does not move very fast. I was very excited by this. We're talking about moving, like, little tree little dudes minis, on, little a, on a football board. Like, physical little, little toys. Little, I, it's a little tiny miniature toy football team. And I move them around and they do stuff. It's right up there with my tiny little toy army. It's something that I thoroughly enjoy. Both my games workshop. But yeah, yeah. It is super not the strategic good play thing to do. I do it every time I can. Every <laughs> time I can. Always blows my opponent's mind. Super fun. It was a good game. I love a good game. Yeah, I lost. If you want to... <laughs> it doesn't matter as long as it was a good game. I don't care if I win. I want a good game. So that's fine. Um, I suppose we'll just jump right into what's in our cup. Yeah. We stopped at Double D's Cheesecake on the way home, because we're at Games Workshop, or as Diana likes to call it, the Nerd Daycare. Mm -hmm. uh, we're, you know what? Mark goes with it. It's, it's delightful. We're, what, one, two, three doors down from Double D's Cheesecake? Yep. Yeah. So we clearly had to go for coffees. And I got a mocha, mocha raspberry latte. Oh my god. I got their seasonal cinnamon roll latte. <sighs> so good. Cinnamon and caramel? I had it with regular milk and whipped cream. Oh, my stomach's going to be so angry. Oh, not my stomach. My intestines are going to be so angry at me in like three hours. No regrets. <laughs> Worth it. Worth it. So, which totally explains why I'm drinking my chamomile fennel tea blended tea right now. <laughs> Oopsies. <laughs> I am thoroughly caffeinated and oh, oh, yeah. more than sh thoroughly sugared. So I don't really, I don't put sugar in the chamomile because <coughs> that kind of defeats the whole calm the system purpose. Yeah. So it is, uh, technically it is bedtime tea by Twinnings. Uh, I like it because its primary ingredients are chamomile and fennel, both of which calming substances. So they help calm digestive tracts and stuff. So I like, I tend to drink it to help keep everything happy. Nobody likes having like a rock hard belly or upset stomachs or, no. and it's not fun. So I just drink some of this every day and it sort of prevents that from happening unless I do something dumb like have a large cup of coffee with a lot of milk it just helps mute some of the <laughs> some of the why did you drink dairy issue I found I had later <laughs> I still do it I still love it and I know I pay for it it's nobody's fault of my own I'm taking my brace off guys I'm still injured I just can't I just yes it hurts to move without my hand and a brace uh if you're new and you don't know I did it's like a baby fracture it's super tiny I like they showed me on the x-ray. That was very kind of them. I saw that my bones in my hand. I don't know what it was they were trying to point out to me. The bone is still in your hand, therefore it's okay. It's not busted to pieces. It looks like a bone. But they assure me there's a fracture on it, so that's fine. 
It hurts. I believe them. But I can't do my wrist brace right now. I need to, I need to let my wrist breathe for a bit. So we're like, what, three weeks out now since I did that? I think so, yeah. So that makes sense. I start getting irritated and stop using braces usually about three weeks into a six week routine. routine. It's just, oh, your hand's always kind of hot and damp. I feel you. Ugh. And you wake up and you have like a damp hand. I understand. Ugh, I, I still sleep with the brace on because when you're sleeping, you're not paying attention and I need, yeah. I need the support. But I will still sleep. I'm tending, I'm starting to take it off more and more during the day now. So do not yell at me. I understand I'm being dumb. <laughs> uh, do you want to, well, you're having a glass of water because. Yep. Over caffeinated, over sugared. Over caffeinated. Zoom. We are so good to go. Um, cool threads? Yeah. I have, it's not cool enough in here for threads. So I have with me today my rivers wrap i got complimented on a river, on my rivers wrap today good i was out and about with my mom and this older lady came up and she's she's just like touch and she does that like oh i need to touch, touch this that. yeah like which was a little bit like whoa but like she was she really liked it so i like took it off and i was like showing it off and telling her all about it and like she was into it when you see things that are like in your knitting things and you go for it and you're like i'm sorry i am a knitter I really need to touch that thing on you. Because if it's a fellow knitter, you know, the first thing they do, oh my God, let me take this off and show you. You need to touch yeah, like, this. <laughs> let, me <laughs> let me strip. Let me strip. You need to touch my clothes. I don't know who you are and we're around thousands of people. <laughs> Put on my sweater. I'm, like, <laughs> I'm not yeah. wrong. That's, we it's all do thing. it. It is, yeah. And if we know it's a fellow knitter, we're so excited. <laughs> oh, I'm glad somebody gets a really good wrap. I, it looks yeah. so good. I, I'm into it. It's my favorite thing. Isabella loves hers. Wears it all the time. I, long as it took me to make this one, I might have to make more in like other colorways because it's pretty great. I love the initial pattern, but I would need to like uh, almost about uh, 20 to 30% increase in width because I found it too narrow for my frame. Mm, okay. And then maybe add an extra row or two to each section to make it long enough to actually be a bulky scarf wrap for me. That's why Isabella got it when I made the river shot because I made it and it looks great, but it's just a touch too small for my frame. My, my shoulders and the girls overpower the wrap. Fair. That's not going to work. So I need to make it bigger, but I do want to make another one though. So keeping the eye out at some point, a yarn combination will hit me and then all of a sudden we'll be on my needles. Guys, just watch. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. This is a Jocelyn Works. What side of this project am I on? I don't know. Nobody knows. Hey, listen, I only have three projects and you have two, right? Yes. And I have no spinning and you have spinning, so we're actually matched for crafting this week. Oh my goodness. And I have a non yarn sort of craft. I, even. I do not have a non yarn sort of craft. I've okay, been doing it's... a lot of background admin stuff, which is so boring. Don't do background admin stuff. Well, you do have to do it at some point. It's not the fun, glamorous part. It's the boring part. It is the boring part. I understand. But it has to get done, so. Ooh! Super random live question. <laughs> okay. I'm concerned now. When Bold, uh -huh. the company you work for, uh -huh. that we've all learned to love because if we don't, you'll give us scary eyes. <laughs> <laughs> you will love the company. <laughs> you'll love the company. Uh, <laughs> the company will take care of you. you. Yeah. Or the, yeah. <laughs> No, it's not, it's not you, like that. You don't love the company. The company loves you. No. <laughs> not like that, but yes. Not like that at all. Okay. So um, what about the company? Last year, they did charity tickets for the drive for Behind Closed Doors, which I just got my notification to ask if I wanted to go to the Behind the Closed Doors event in St. Patel at the end of November. Oh, yeah. So if that pops up, don't even ask. Just buy us tickets. Okay. We'll go. All right. I'm yeah, assuming think... your husband doesn't want to go to a behind the closed door mall shopping event. Uh, no, he definitely does not. I can answer that right yeah, now. I feel like I'm, I'm safe going. May I be your plus one to this event for? I love to shop and we had a blast last year and I feel we need to do it again this year. I agree. Yeah, and I think that was somebody like personally had those through yeah, something. I don't know. So if, yeah, if, if that not, pops up again, yeah. I will and definitely not, jump then on when it. When we get closer to the date, let's just buy tickets. Yeah. Yeah. Let's do that. And this year we'll check our coats. Did we check our coats last year? I can't remember. I don't remember. We're checking them this year. I don't want to be that one. I feel like maybe we left them in the car. It might have been warm enough. We might have just left them in the car. I seem to recall it being a very chilly walk, but I don't remember if it was just really blustery and we had coats 
Or it was I know cold because we didn't have coats. We weren't daft and we parked in the co-op parking lot and just walked farther away to the door so we didn't have to deal with all the traffic. Yes. Which we're just going to do again this year because why wouldn't you? Yeah. All right, shall I talk about my FO? Yeah, let's do the thing. Would, you like, to, would yeah. you like to stick an actual hat on your head? Oh my god, I don't think if I'm, I don't know if I'm allowed to. Stick Here is hat. the woodsman toque. And for people who can't see the thing that I'm holding up, this is a two by two ribbed hat. I must love my father because I beyond hate ribbing. I... I don't finish ribbing in my socks. I don't finish full ribbing re requirements and so I don't I do not enjoy ribbing. And I patiently sat and on 5.5 millimeter needles. And this is knit flat. And then you pull it together at the end and then you sew down the side seam. So I knit two by two ribbing flat for nine inches. And then I started doing decreases for the head. Oh my freaking god. <laughs> This thing is so dense. Now it's a bulky weight yarn and I used the Charisma from Loops and Threads, which is a, a mm. five weight yarn. So like a five That's and a half cozy. millimeter hat. There is some, like this thing is, it's, listen, it has no, um, it's not flaccid. Like it's, <laughs> it stands up on its own just fine. I've mm. not woven in my ends, guys. I, I, I sewed it together. What do you want? <laughs> I had to weave in ends this week because this is for my, my parents' wedding anniversary. My mom's getting an entire shawl. My dad's getting a hat. <laughs> But it's a ribbed hat, so a ribbed hat. You, you must love him very much. I, yeah, my mom's like, well, she loves you more than me. And my dad doesn't know why, because he hasn't gotten that. <laughs> like, yeah, because I don't, I don't make ribbed hats for myself. I might have to. I have enough leftover yarn, and this is so dense and so squishy. And it's so beautiful. Uh, the colorway I ended up going with was the Northern Lights from Charisma, which is Loops and Threads, which I believe is a Michaels brand. Kitten! Um, I have enough left over the bulky that I might make one for myself. I don't know yet. It's so dense and so squishy. Maybe I'll make headbands. I'll make me and mom matching headbands. Ooh, Because I cute. wouldn't have to do as much ribbing. So that I wouldn't feel like I'm trying to kill myself. Um, which is good. But this is very similar to a style that my dad had when we lived up in Akalowit. Uh, he had a hat like this that he wore a lot. So... I'm hoping he likes this. And the ribbing means that there's a maximum amount of uh, leeway on however big his head actually happens to be. We measured. I have a measurement. It doesn't necessarily mean it's going to work that well. <laughs> uh, yeah. But, you know, for a hat for you, for placing on your head, ah, yes. it is so squishy. I will perch it atop oh. my hair. Very... <laughs> That looks ridiculous. <laughs> you look like one of those Christmas gnomes that has had too much to drink. <laughs> I'm taking a picture. Can we send a, send a photo to your mother? She needs to see this craziness. <laughs> Guys, I have enough left over in a ball of yarn that I, I'm probably going to make headbands or something. I may honestly just crochet them at a 5.5 millimeter or something, but that is crazy. <laughs> you just... You look ridiculous. I love it so much. If you guys want to see pictures and you listen to the podcast, we try to post pictures of all of our projects. Uh, I am awful with getting them onto my project pages on Ravelry. Uh, I I have been given my 30 days smarten up notice. Uh, so that's going to happen. But we do post them to our Instagram account. So you can follow us on Instagram at the Northern Knits Podcast on Instagram. I'm really good at posting Instagram photos. I suck at posting photos to my Ravelry project pages. I'm the opposite. I have... <laughs> I have photos for all of my projects. I don't yep. remember to post on Instagram, Instagram until you, you yell at me. Until I poke you, yeah. <laughs> I'm tired of showing pictures of nothing but my stuff for weeks. Post a photo. That <laughs> <coughs> just looks ridiculous. Oh, all right. I'm, I'm highly amused by this. Uh, as, as well you should be. Oh, I right. can't take myself seriously right now. <laughs> I would hope not. It looks... You just... I don't have words. Like the Kellogg's dudes have better hats. <laughs> the little cartoons. Whatever, Leprechaun, no Keebler elves. They're the ones that I don't. Can you the tell? Rice, the Rice Krispies guys. Is it the Rice Krispie guys? Yeah, I think. So one friend. of them wears a hat and they're in a trio and they're on commercials yeah. for kids, some sort of kids. Guys, I can't read any the of it. The Snap, Crackle, and Pop. Yes. Yeah. I just don't remember the advertise. Rice Krispies. Okay. Because it goes Snap, Crackle, and Pop. If I want anything with marshmallow, I have to make the marshmallow from scratch to be corn-free. You can tell how often I make things with marshmallow in them. 
Do you know how long it takes to mar make marshmallows? You will look up recipes for handmade marshmallows. You're just not going to do it that often. <laughs> it is too much work. And I okay. love puff wheat cake. Yeah. And I will not do it. I will give my hat. This, this hat is back. <clears throat> Our hat looks slightly less absurd now. <laughs> yes, you really do. Only slightly. So, I'd finished a thing, which is good because I had to give it as I have to give it as a gift this coming weekend. Oopsies. Shall I talk about a thing? Yeah. Well, we're pretty we're pretty well paired this week, so. Okay. Okay, let's let's do this thing. Let's do this thing. Do that thing. Do that thing. Okay. Still working on the glam lamb. I. Uh, <clears throat> This is the, okay, so I've got one arm hole, and uh, there's the, oh, there's my, my, I made some progress. You did, that's made good. A, made a little bit of progress, not a huge amount of progress. It's still, like, a fair number of stitches on the needle. Uh, 80, I think? Yes. So we're getting there. I'm, uh, like, maybe a fifth of the way down the back. Well, you gotta do, like, it's, well, it's a paid-for pattern, so you got to do a certain number of yeah. inches across the back before your second armhole. I think I worked it out to be something like 50 rows or something. Yeah. 50 that's ridges? Not, I don't know. That's not anyway. too bad. I just measured. Wouldn't that be easier? <coughs> yeah, maybe. Okay. Anyway, I still think it's roughly a fifth. Sure. Uh, I was going to say more words, and they all fell out of my brain just now. Well, you probably should tell people what yarn you're using. That's probably the words I was going to say. Cool. It is Loops and Threads Charisma in charcoal. It's bulky yarn and it's squishy and it's acrylic. I'm excited to not have to hand wash this thing. Oh, yeah, hey. There's something about being able to stick stuff in the washer <laughs> and dryer that just feels very satisfying some days. You're like, and it doesn't matter. You're going in the cycle. <laughs> Still not probably going to throw it in the dryer just because dryers are rough. Well, so are washers. I don't know. We'll see. That I'm would just... take a good 24 hours to dry on the rack. It would. That's a little intense. I'm just really afraid of putting handmade things through the dryer because, I don't know, reasons. I do my uh, car, my uh, cocoon cardigan. Goes in out of the washer and dryer all the time. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm, just, I'm so afraid. I, I guess I started out being afraid that my ends would unweave themselves, but I'm pretty <sighs> confident in my end weaving abilities now. So. That's fair. I could see, like, in the beginning where it's kind of a, like, did I do that well enough? Did I not do that well enough? But my cocoon cardigan's crocheted, so I actually crocheted all of my ends together. So I crocheted as I changed from one ball to the next ball into the project. So it's real good and tight in there, so I didn't, I didn't worry about it as much. Big squishy. So squishy. Big squishy. It's going to be... <coughs> Diana still got the tiny chicken disease. I had my sick day on Thursday. I'm doing much, much better. I'm eating fiber. <laughs> of course you're eating fiber. <laughs> I'm on the upswing. I just can't get rid of this stupid cough. <clears throat> It'll go away on its own. It just, it takes time sometimes. Ugh. Anyway. I'm going to say it's fun. Oh, it's, nobody said it was. Oh. Did you finish the thing? Nah, you're working on a thing. I'm working on a thing. You did the thing. Good. Okay. You're going to be so happy when you're on the sleeves. I am so excited to be on the sleeves. They're just going to go whoosh after this. Yes. Yes. Hey, listen, that hat didn't take me as long as I thought it was going to. Uh, I cast it on a sock, you guys. And I am currently just stalling because I'm not at the end of my row. Uh, I cast it on the Jack socks. So if you guys remember from an earlier podcast, I picked up a Jack sock set. It's actually called Jack. Uh, it's themed Jack from the Nightmare Before Christmas, so Jocelyn had to buy it from Sew Into Knitting, because those girls know me, and they picked the best of holidays to do holiday colors for, and that is Halloween. Don't get me wrong, I love Christmas colors too, I just love Halloween more, which I think is an okay statement to make. So I bought the Magic Project Bag, not that I needed to use a project bag that you can literally put a sweater into for my socks, so my socks live in the Erin Lane sock sack that I have. And uh, I uh, cast it on a toe this morning while I was watching podcasts. Everybody coming back from Rhineback and doing the Rhineback recaps. Super jealous. And the Historian Knits podcast. I just really like her. She's so nice. Um, and she always works on very different things, which is really nice to see. Hmm. So I wanted to get the toe done because I knew I had to ride the bus today. 
thank heavens because my bus driver thought he was an Indy 500 race car driver. So I did my toes in the orange, which is a contrast color I got for the Jack colorway. And now I'm into the body of the sock itself. I could have done a pattern. I looked at something like 50 some odd sock patterns. I really just like doing vanilla socks. I don't know if I'll ever get into sock patterns more than just looking at them and going, oh, those are pretty. But I didn't have the urge to do any one of them. I just want to go roundy roundy. Nothing wrong with roundy roundy. So especially with such pretty yarn. And I pick heavily variegated skeins of yarn. We're self striping. So I'm not bored. So here's the big old skein. Oh, I cannot do that. That hurts. Okay, I can change hands. Here's my skein. There's some black. There's some orange. There's some gray. There's some... You guys, it's the Tim Burton's Nightmare Before Christmas colors. <laughs> all, all of them. All of them. They're quite muted. It looks really good. And I am super excited with how it's working up. So my orange toe is blending perfectly with the orange in it. And I've got this wonderful sort of... I don't know how to describe it. It's not striped, but it's not pooling. It looks like somebody started on one side of the sock and randomly ran a brush that wasn't like a paintbrush across that wasn't covered in paint it's like dry brushing I, I won't make much sense to many people but that's what i see so super excited for my sock to grow it is my bus knitting when i travel and when i wait at appointments and stuff so i don't know how fast they'll get knit i don't know how slow they'll be knit it just depends on how often i have to leave the house to go do boring adult things <sighs> my parents are coming to town this weekend coming weekend so Maybe not a lot of time. <laughs> we'll see. We shall see. I am working on, as always, my 2.25 millimeter Chow Goo lace needles. Because I love them. And if I ever buy a second set, I'll just have two socks on the go. All the time. <laughs> I <clears throat> have not, since I got these, picked up my other sock knitting needles. Huh. They just don't exist for me. I look at them, I know they're there. I could start another sock. Nope. They're not my Chow house i don't want to i don't want to work on them so that leaves me with one project no nope, two projects technically one's a quick talk about because there's not really much to show yet because i've got the pattern written out but i haven't finished making it oh related to jack socks yes i saw a poster yesterday for the winnipeg symphony orchestra doing a thing where they show the movie but they play the music yes live. That's, uh, that's the uh movies at the symphony yeah that i love that it seemed that seemed cool and they're doing jurassic park too yeah yeah yeah, I've seen Harry Potter, the first Harry Potter, and I've seen Star Wars, and I've seen one or two others that they've done over the years. I love it. I love the the, the, the movies at the symphony. It's always really good. The Harry Potter I took Isabella to because it was for kids. <coughs> and he had to have a child to go. But, but Harry Potter. Well, I told Isabella it was a symphony and she looked at me and I told her it was Harry Potter at the symphony and she said, yeah, done. She was <laughs> Harry Potter. She thought it was great. I didn't tell her that's not how regular symphonies go. That's just that's just how that one went. So uh, my super quick flash show off is on my patterns that I'm looking for testers for. They are written out, but they're not completed in the knitting prospects because I write them out and then I, I finish working on them. So I've started in on the uh, worsted DK white one. It can be done in a DK or a worsted. I'm doing it in a DK but I have it set up so it can be done either way. So if you've got DK, you can. If you've got worsted, you can. There's a snowflake stitch marker telling me which side is the front for a reason. These are winter themed shawls, guys. This one, um, I know better. Mom will get mad if I make too many out of real wool. So this is some ice cream from Lion Brand. It's a massive ball, which is good because I'm, I'm, I rough, roughly estimated the math out to be about a thousand yards worsted DK. So like I don't I don't do small shawls I do big shawls you can always make them smaller and I definitely put in instructions to do so but I make big ones because I like big ones so I picked out the ice cream one that's got the blues and the whites in it I'm making a snowflake shawl blues and whites I can I could show you the one that's the fingering weight one but all you would see was a bunched up thing with some randomized holes that make no sense till it's off the needles and I'm not done the border yet so. <laughs> I've got two things I got to finish this week. Ha, 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 ha. Uh, that's not going to happen. <laughs> no faith. No faith. You have little faith. Listen, I get distracted. Shall I show everybody what I got distracted with? Yes. We're we super excited. So Jocelyn cast on the lamb glam. 
And you're thinking, cool, that's great. I have two armholes. <laughs> Something even still on the needles? Yes, there's needles here. Okay, there's still needles. There's okay. needles. Okay, I'm like, do you have like an entire body of a sweater in the time that it's taken me to get like a third of a sweater? No, but I will shortly. <laughs> I stopped to do some work stuff. I'm making this out of Knit Picks Brava, which is an acrylic. It is so freaking silky smooth. It's just, whoo, and it goes. You felt this stuff. Yes. So silky. I'm uh, making mine out of the colorway eggplant, which is really dark purple, which I really don't work well with in on fingering, but I work great in bulky. I did not swatch, so I made some adjustments and changes. I did the largest size for the front flap. I did medium size across my back because I really have more chest than back. I really do. Like it, there's quite a there's quite a size measurement differential. And now I'm on to the other front side as I wear it backwards. <laughs> uh, and I will be probably done in a day or two. Uh, sleeves, I've got extra because I have made some modifications. The sleeves are going to start higher up than they call for in the pattern. But I have some extra Brava eggplant. So I'm going to start in my main color in the purple. And then I'm going to stripe into the gray that I picked. I don't remember the name of. It's another Brava Bulky, but I don't remember the name of this one. Why am I looking? Oh Silver. Thank you. It's a really nice gray. I'll be really interested to see what these two look like beside each other when they're done. Like this? <laughs> As I hold up the gray and the ball next to the eggplant knitted. Yeah, that tells you a whole bunch. Oh, jeez. It's like mine's denser and like I've got more of a halo on mine versus yes, yours is yeah, silkier and drapier. Yeah. Mine's definitely got more drape going on and, and doesn't have that halo going on for it. So these are like holding up between yours and mine when we're finished. They're gonna they're gonna be very different for being the same shawl or same shawl, same cardigan. So I am super excited to see how yours turns out too. Yeah. 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 Like mine has got such a loose gauge to it. Yeah, mine doesn't drape quite that much. Yeah, I've got a, a ridiculous amount of drape going on here. So I'm hoping to be done uh, shortly because I'd like to be wearing this. And because really, I'm on my second armhole. So you're going to have a whole sweater and I'll have like half a sweater. You're going to cover that I'm just faster <laughs> at knitting. It's fine. There's nothing wrong with the speed at which you knit. That is the speed at which you knit. And there it goes that way. Ta-da! I have a second knitted thing to talk about. I'm done. Tapped him out. All right. Here's here's my thing. Here's my thing. I'm going to go back to my socks. Doesn't hurt my I learned much. that I can pick up <clears throat> small needles again. Woohoo! Woohoo! Oh, I'm so excited for you. It seems to be entirely in the way that I hold the needles. Because uh, I tried my regular way and ten stitches in my hand was hurting. I have so much coffee in my system I want to start dancing. <laughs> I want to twitch. <laughs> You know how I feel about twitchers. <laughs> Knit faster. Knit faster. Get your twitching out. Oh my god. Oh, hey, this needle's coming unscrewed. Ooh, I feel like a small okay. child stuck at a dinner she doesn't want to be at. Oh. <clears throat> no regrets. <sighs> so. I have knots in my hair. <laughs> so I picked up the Find Your Fade, mostly because I was... Oh, you're I, so close to being done. <laughs> I went to put a picture up on my Glam Lamb page, and then I saw that... My find your fade I had marked as being like 95% done and I'm like, damn, I really want to finish that. So I picked it up yesterday during the Patreon knit club thing. Google, live Google, hang, listen. Whatever, we hang out on Google Hangouts. We hang out on Google Hangouts once a month with Patreon members. And it's anyway, fun. <laughs> so I picked this up just to see if I could and uh, So long as I Jessica can. doesn't get me right, ranting. Oh, man. <laughs> so I got, I got like a whole... Where's, where's my progress keeper? Which side is I don't even know what side is. This is a really big shot. Incoherent mumbling and whining. Incoherent whining. That might be our title. <laughs> uh, but I got about an inch done. So I think I have four more rows of this lace pattern. And then I'm done with all of the lace in the shawl. And then it's just a garter section, which I'm going to continue on in this gold. I believe it's called Cinnamon Dolce, this gold and gray I want to say yes, yeah, Cinnamon Dolce. I could be wrong. We've it's it's a long term project that one. Oh, years. Yep. Years and years and years. 
but I'm so freaking close. It's not going to be done next week and probably not done for like another month, but I'm It'll so be close. done in time for Christmas, which means you can wear it Christmas morning when it's chilly outside and you're drinking hot chocolate at your mom's house. I'm going to- Sorry, at your in-laws. No, yes, mother-in-laws. Mother-in-laws, then no, do... you start- No, you do your family's Christmas Eve and yeah. then you go to his family Christmas Day. Yeah. I'm doing Christmas Eve even. Oh yeah, you're hosting this year, aren't you? Yeah, I hosted last year for the first time. It just makes more sense because my parents are out of town, but everybody else is in the city. That no, that makes complete so it just, sense. It's makes more sense for, for me to host. city people. My sister and I and my uncle and uh, my aunt we trade off every year, so it's our year this year to host. Makes sense. Yeah. Once more with feeling, this is all my travel yarn. I've got my San Francisco yarn. It's not once more. We're going to hear about it at least three more times. Oh, yeah. Got the San Francisco travel yarn. I don't know if that had a colorway. I have long since lost that ball band. I don't remember. It's from San Francisco when I was, like, 18. <clears throat> oh, decades ago. No. no. Decade ago. That doesn't quite work, then. Because I haven't been knitting for quite a decade. No. Because you were I was probably, like, 22, then. Okay. I was like, I think you've been knitting since you were 18, have you? No, I have not. Uh, I've got this blue stuff that I did two sections of because I liked it so much. It's got a slight sparkle that absolutely does not pick up on camera at all. That's fine. That a lot of Stellina doesn't. Ziggy Stardust was the colorway name. That was from I Knit or Die in London from like the third time that I was there because I keep going to London. I kept my Oyster card this last time because like I'm going to go back. This seems wise. Uh, and then that fades almost imperceptibly into... Oh my gosh, I want to say it was Peacock from Manos de Uruguay, which I got from Woolsey Wool here. And that fades lovely but not seamlessly into the Truffle, which is from Hedgehog Fibers from the eight hours I spent in Dublin during a layover. Okay. And then that fades into the Cinnamon Dolce, which was from Pearlescence Yarns in San Jose like the week before they closed because I just so happened to be there. That was years ago. That was years ago, yes. Uh, the newest yarn in this shawl is the uh, peacock in the middle that I got at Wolseley, specifically for this project to tie all the colors together. Which is still years ago! Uh, at least three. I'm pretty sure I started this in 2016. Oh my word. Oh my word. Because we were podcasting. We were. But I think it was the first year of podcasting. Yes, because I finished the shawl that spring when I was out at my mother's. But this yarn, this is the oldest yarn in the project. Which is impressive because Smokey loved to sleep on it. So you imagine me trying to rotate it while I had an ancient cat napping on it? I got the look. Every time I move that shawl, I am napping here. I'm like, oh, for heaven's sakes. <sighs> Whatever. You are going to love it when it's done. Because oh, it's so huge excited. and it's perfect for curl curling up and cozying up in yeah. on a cool day. Oh, perfect. All right. And in my mind, will go great with Toothless. Yes, the giant toothless kigurumi. <sighs> yep. I'm so pumped to have that. I'm so pumped that I can knit in tiny yarn again. Right? No, it's so... Yeah, it feels really good when you can do that, yeah. <sighs> I'm super excited that I to be able been, to crochet soon. Not that I haven't been thoroughly enjoying this. I'm almost done the third ball of this. Oh my goodness. I know. It goes fast. It does. I've got it to knit... It feels really more, nice. I've got to knit <sighs> more bulky things. Just wait till we pick up some worsted stuff. It's, yeah. it's not quite as fast as bulky, but it feels just as satisfying to knit. You're like, oh... I knit, a, I knit a whole ball in a week, and I didn't even have that much time to knit this week. And you're like, you cannot do that with fingering without some serious commitment to knitting. <laughs> Man, gotta knit more bulky things. Oh. Okay. Also, just fun and cozy. I have finished talking about my knitting. Okay, well, I'm out of knitting. Oh, right, but I have spinning. Spinning yarns. I just... I'm almost did a whole <coughs> sweater in a week. What do you want? <laughs> I also did a bit of spinning yesterday. I can't really pinch my forefinger and thumb yet. That's, <laughs> that's fair. There'll be no drafting from my left hand for a couple more days, guys. I now have two complete... That's not enough. I tried this at the side. There we go. That's I now not, have... You made enough noise, Phaedra came out. Ooh, hi, cat. Oh, what are you doing? I don't know what she does. She's like cleaning my foot. Um, that's mm, possible. I have two completed plies of the Storm in the Castle merino top from Hillary's Magical Yarnorium. Oh, it looks so good. And I don't know if... Are you even supposed to let plies rest? Is that is that a thing, letting the plies rest for 24 hours on a bobbin before plying them together? I believe so, yes. Okay. Well, then I've done that. So I can ply them together now. I'm pretty excited. This All this white and gray and stuff. Oh, 
November the 23rd. Are you busy? I don't know. <laughs> like, I just randomly ask you questions. I know you don't know the answer. I really have no idea. What day of the week is that even? That's a Saturday. Uh, that actually doesn't help. I don't know. We'll have to figure that out. Okay. The Winnipeg Drop Spindlers next meetup is that Sunday, Saturday. Oh, that would be delightful. I, I will definitely come to that if I can. I think we should try to go and support Jocelyn. Yes, Not other Jocelyn. Other Jocelyn. The current spinning also, project. Also, the forks in November and the Saturday knitting. Or spinning, I should say. Oh. Hello. Yeah. Hello. That needs to happen. What do you think, what do you think that's going to be when it's all together? I don't know. We're going to have to wait to see what weight it comes out as when you're finished. Yeah. I think you'll have to weigh it to see what you get gram wise so you know your yardage. And then from there, I think that'll definitely make a decision for you. Should be about 100 grams. Okay. Are you thinking it's going to be like a DK or a fingering? Uh, the plies are largely fingering right. themselves. So I'm so thinking DK, DK worsted. Least. Yeah, DK, DK worsted. worsted. Do you know what I would honestly say? Because it's like my sort of go to answer right now for everything. Mm. One of your yarn choices for a night shift shawl by Andrea Mallory. Maybe. Because it's a nice neutrally color. Could be. I mean, for the moment, you can finish it, tie it up, bundle it up, make it look pretty, yeah, and that's... wait till something <clears throat> comes along and your brain goes, must make. Yeah, that's, that's honestly what's going to happen. Yeah. It's so pretty. It's so but pretty. You've got a ton of options given that nice sort of muted of color palette, which is super exciting. I still think it wants to be I have something electric with lace. green. <laughs> I have electric green fiber. <laughs> crinkle, crinkle, crinkle. I have eight ounces of electric green fiber. Yeah, I'm not going to let you eat my fiber, cat. I'm not sure if she'll eat fiber, but she does love your project bags. Yeah, all of them. The cloth ones, the plastic ones. You I name it, she loves it. Sitting on the end of the rope that she was playing with last time. Oh, good. She'll play with it this time, too. Yeah, well, that's why I'm sitting on it. Good <laughs> plan. Okay, that's my spinning. That's your spinning? <clears throat> we Sweet. had some yarn on the go. On, on the go. We had coffee. It was yarn and coffee and knitting and talking and coffee. and. <laughs> See, here's the problem. Because, you know, like, like, Jamie watches from Cozy at Mitts. This is why Diana had problems at Knit City. Not this year, but the year before when we were there and we met you. It's because she hadn't been caffeinated enough. So I've discovered the trick. Before we meet up with you ladies, or even better, we'll be in the same hotel and we'll just start right off on the good foot. And we'll just start pumping her full of coffee first thing in the morning. She just needs more coffee. I mean, we'll have to put her to bed at 8 o'clock because she'll crash like a small child and too much sugar. But I feel like... This is true. This is totally fine. You'd sleep well. You wouldn't have the sleeping in a hotel issue. You'd be out cold. Oh, yeah. <laughs> just done. <laughs> just done that was that was your thing you just needed more coffee to keep up with us clearly mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. no it's a lot of coffee it mumbles your words and jumbles your brain and makes me want to twitch and dance we did have some yarn on the go uh i did a couple of boring adult things which is never terribly exciting but it is what it is but i did go to gw today which meant riding on the bus so i worked on my sock and then we were at double g's cheesecake getting said coffee so i worked a little bit there diana worked on show notes which was good because that needed to happen <laughs> And I worked on pulling everything up from memory and talking to her about a whole bunch of things. Increasing in speed as the caffeine kicked in. <laughs> caffeine, sugar. Oh. Hey, it gave you the opportunity to show off your little electronic yeah. crafting. Okay, so. Which I think we need to talk about. Yes, I've been amazing. doing. <clears throat> I started working on electronic craft. And you have access to a cat right now, so you'll have to look at her eyeballs. You know what? I actually had a tab open with pictures of cats. Oh, good. Last night, trying to get this right. It's like, I'm not a graphic designer. Could you imagine your husband walking past? What are you doing? <laughs> oh, he knew exactly what I was doing. Okay. So you may remember from probably over a month ago, I was talking about the Ada Box, which is a subscription. Wow. Caffeine. I can't help you. <laughs> to do the best subscription I subscription electronics <laughs> kit. So this just made the eye, eyeballs. This is the monster mask. And I'm going to turn it on. For the record, she's holding up a small pair of cat eye glasses shaped, uh, essentially little mini LED screens. Yes. And uh, they're programmable rectangular screens inside this little eye mask that she has programmed to function like cat eyeballs. Yeah, they look sort of like cat eyes. Which is so cool. So they're animated. I have turned off the blinking because I thought cats don't really blink, but then it just kind of stares and that's sort of creepy. I mean, a cat does stare. <laughs> yeah, but I was I've, going I've woken cute. up to one of those. 
Yeah, I know. And it just, I don't and know. And it's creepy. It is creepy. <laughs> you might want to put a slow blink ratio back in there. So they just kind of look around and mm -hmm. they are light sensitive. Uh, yeah, the pupils dilate. It's so cool. Yeah. Where I mean, we were where we were sitting in double D's. It was kind of dark, so it looked like me after an eye appointment. Full dilate. <laughs> if I woo, the flashlight here. Whoa, hello. Sorry, I looked in the wrong spot. Oh, right. All right, that side. I might anyway. look up right now because I don't want to look in the light again. Sorry. <laughs> Anyway, I'm doing a poor job of showing it off, but uh, <clears throat> they are light sensitive, so the pupils will dilate. Um, this little thing hanging off the side here is just the battery. The little nose bit is a capacitive touch sensor. You're going to have to explain what that is. It means you can touch it and it, re it registers being touched. And it'll it doesn't, do things? It doesn't do anything right now. It's okay. essentially a button that doesn't press down and you just it's just a touch button. Okay. Can you make it a button that does something? I can make it a button that does something. You guys, you can boop the nose on this mask. This is very important. This is a cat eye mask on which there is a boopable nose. You must make the button function. So if you have any ideas of what I should make the nose do. I mean, it's not going to bite you, so it's not going to do what a cat does when you boop it on the nose. So, I mean, I feel like the, wind, the options are kind of more uh, open for you. The, yes, so options are animation or noises. Uh, you should have a mighty battle cry. Meow. <laughs> <laughs> I could make it go mew. <laughs> Only if it's that high-pitched little kitten one. That way you can be like, listen, you need to hear my mighty battle cry. <laughs> <laughs> and and they fit just perfectly in my glasses. <sighs> I'm so happy that you're enjoying that box because it's so you. <laughs> Those eyes are just creepy. Put a blink function in, dear. <laughs> yeah, and uh, can I see anything right now? Heck no, I'm staring at the back of a very bright circuit board. I believe I said welcome to my world. <laughs> <laughs> some days, guys, some days. <laughs> I also have, there's these three buttons up here that um, I can, stuff? They don't yet, but they can. Ooh, if you like, you need to I have plug in headphones. Out. Super decked out eyeballs. And I I don't even know what this plug is for. It's oh, labeled D3. I don't know. But it's got a microphone on it. It's got I get a super fancy eyeballs. Yeah, these this anyway. So this is super fun. And uh if you're into electronics coding cool cosplay mask things. This is super, super easy to okay. configure. So, um, so there's an anime I watch. Yeah, it's called R W B Y Ruby. There's an anime I set in on this. Good, because <laughs> one of the characters they run into that teaches them things, like the sort of moral support, get through a, a bad moment, is a little old lady, and she has fake eyeballs. Of course, they go on your head, but they're like super round metal um, uh, goggles that like just they're just attached to her head, mm -hmm. but they're her eyeballs. So they close down to squints, and sometimes they spin <laughs> around because she needs to take. Like, I will show you like one of the clips of her. Thing. Oh, I'll, yeah, you could totally her. do that with yeah. these. Yeah, yeah, I will show you just because I think you'll get a, a huge kick out of it. And I'm just like, she's like, hang on, my eyes aren't working. She like, bats the side of her head into the, and her her eye slit wiggles and then opens up wide. She goes, okay, yeah, that's good. Let's go. <laughs> Sounds so absurd. You can totally do that with these. <laughs> I think you might get a kick out of that. <laughs> yes, that just randomly occurred to me. I'm having a lot of fun with these. Uh, this is going into a cat girl costume for the costume contest at work on Thursday. Absolutely. <coughs> give it some blinking. I will give it some blinking. That's my plan for the, tonight. It will blink. Those people will be really creeped out. Yeah, it's it's supposed to be cute, not creepy. Well, if I still so. have cat ears, I'd loan them to you. But oh, you have your own. Yeah, 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 yeah. I bought I bought my own cat ears you because your own I enjoyed your cat ears so much I decided I needed my own. Which turns yeah. out to have been a good thing because hey, cat girl costume works perfectly. There's nothing wrong with an assortment of weird. Is it one of those ones where people are like, oh, um, you know, dress up as fairy tale characters? Cool, I could do Virgo. I have both chains and a French maid outfit. <laughs> I remember the story. I remember why you have a French maid outfit, and it's probably not the reason you're thinking. For a legitimate reason, people get your brain out of the gutter. I used to it's bowl. not that reason. I used to bowl competitively in adult leagues, and we would have a, a tournament of nations. And I bowled on a women's team, and we always came from France, so we dressed up like French maids. And I was never the one that was so drunk that I was aerating my 
upper legs over top of the aerator in the bowling alley. These women are all older than me, by the way. They all had children about my age. I was decidedly the youngest one there, and usually the most sober. It does sound like fun, though. I feel like I, I should join mom, something. That... I, I let my mom do all that drinking for me, and then dad could pour into the car to go home. I didn't want to do it. <laughs> yes, it's, it's something that if you... I, I would love to get back into an adult bowling league, because it's just... It's just good competitive fun like it's not like oh no it's the worst you're just like dude we're out to play and have fun not even bowling necessarily but like i, I kind of want to join too. something where it's like primarily older women mm -hmm. that are really fun to be with because like you don't there's like the those women that break all the old people stereotypes yeah. well i want to hang out with those women like well, i aspire ladies, to be that the ladies i knit with on the knit and wash on tuesdays they're mostly retired they mostly have like grandchildren and children my age range <laughs> they tell the dirtiest jokes we're sitting here in public people <laughs> and i'm like what just came out of your mouth you have grandchildren <laughs> do you talk to your grandchildren that way <laughs> oh diana i pulled out my needle and i lost the stitch oh, no. just, can you rescue me <laughs> yes i can yes they tell you got too into like, the story oh like ribbed for her pleasure we're sitting in the middle of a restaurant people <laughs> We are that obnoxiously loud to table, and it's not me! <laughs> and it's, when is it never not me? It's like always me. I know, I love it, I love it, I love it, I love it. It's always just nice when you just, whatever group you're hanging out with, you're just comfortable being them. And they're, they're like, nah, this is who we are, and we're fine with who you are. Like, it doesn't bother them anymore, which I definitely think is something that you just sort of grow into as you get older. There we go. I don't know like, if they're the right direction, but they're that's, I don't care. I won't, I won't know so. It's like hanging out with the ladies of the Red Hat Purple Dress Club Society. They seem like they have fun. Yeah. They know who they are. They don't care. They're super cool with who you want to be, too. Doesn't bother them in the slightest. So I have, what, one stitch left till I slip the needle? Two, oh, I'll figure that out later. I'm done looking at we're done. Okay, what's next? Uh oh, we made decisions for the podcast anniversary knit along. The podcast anniversary, podcast anniversary. Podcast anniversary, the third edition will start January first, twenty twenty. Aren't you glad I'm here for all the words? Yeah, because I, I Diana made a decision I know. months in advance. There's an S on the end of that. And I didn't have to go, hey Diana, make a decision. Hey Diana, make a decision. Hey Diana okay, I made a decision. <laughs> She did it all by herself. We're so proud. No, I sorry. want a gold star and a cake. I'll get you a cake. <laughs> I'm not sure if I can find gold stars anymore, but I can get you a cake. <laughs> Might be a cake with a gold star on it. That is acceptable. Okay, I will do that. That's fine. I don't always feel like I'm bullying because I'm always making the decisions, but I know sometimes you just don't want to. And decisions are hard. Decisions are hard. So Diana was like, she really wants to work on her harvest, and it is a free Flats. pattern. Our flax, sorry, is the flax the cardigan? The flax pullover, yeah. The flax is the pullover. I want to work on the harvest, which is the cardigan. These are two free sweater patterns by Tin Can Knits. Uh, and Tin Can Knits is a Canadian designer. And neither one of us has time to, okay, I will probably just start one anyway, because I can't to officially cast on a sweater for ourselves till the 1st of January. So we are going to do a sweater along starting the 1st of January. Whips will be welcome so long as they're under 50%. So if you need extra time, Feel free to start a little early, that's fine. But they have to be a tin can knits pattern. Whatever one floats your boat. Pullover, cardigan, color work. There are many options. They are great sweater designers. And amazingly size inclusive. So it'll be the same rules as always. So if you're an old hat at this, you'll know everything coming in front. Uh, it'll be um, adult sizes only. Kids don't count. Because that's just, that just doesn't, 4XL adult sweater the same as you would a newborn. There's distinctly a different amount of knitting going on in there. Yeah. 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 So we do adult sizing. That's just, that's how we roll. We have made some changes for prizes for the upcoming year. So that's going to be something we'll start talking about when we get into December and everything's finalized and we're good to go so that we don't have to deal with the post anymore. Because Jocelyn's going crazy. It's not been a good post year. It has not been a good post year. And I know I'm not alone. I know other people have, have struggled and had issues this year and over the last couple of years too. So we're like, nope, we've been looking at alternatives and we've decided which route we're going to go. So 
we've made those decisions. It does mean we'll be making some changes. So don't worry about it. You'll get heads up for that when we get there. With the hashtags, they'll all be the same and we'll be entering on Ravel where it won't be a huge change. But if you want extra time to pick out sweaters and pick out yarn and stuff, tin can knits and it's a sweater along. Because Diana has all of that really pretty indie dyer bought yarn from Dye For You and I'm sure Allie is just going to be beyond ecstatic you've actually started working on that. <laughs> so will I. <laughs> So that's a thing. So that's what we're going to do for the podcast anniversary this year. And that was, we came, that came up at the Patreon chat. Yeah. And we were like, done, decision made. We made decisions. We made decisions. Asa and Jessica were there. There's proof. Other people saw us do it. Uh, I have so much caffeine in my body. Okay. What are we <coughs> doing now? <clears throat> I can word. I can't think far enough ahead to figure out what we're doing. Uh, literature can talk about books. We're reading the same book right now for like the first time ever. I just about jumped all over your head to make you start the book. <laughs> I understand. I started last night and I'm already most of the way through chapter two. And they're not especially short chapters. They're 40 minute long chapters sometimes. Uh, I started listening to Consider the Fork. I believe the next day Diana started getting random information. About forks and cookware. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I would just be like, here's your random fact for the day. And I was holding back. Hardcore holding back. And then Saturday, we got on at noon to do the Patreon chat our time. And we get on, and Diana's literally logging in. She's setting up her headphones. She's putting her phone down at the right angle. And I'm going, you will start listening to this book. <laughs> I was like, there's no, your next book is. And you should, no, no, no. You will, you will download this on Audible when we are done, and you will start listening. <laughs> Uh, and I did because I happened to finish my book the day before, so you had really excellent timing. And I wasn't wrong. It was a good choice. Oh, it was. So, the narrator's so good. So British. I held that back for the nugget for you. I love a good nonfiction book when they're funny, when they've got good information, but they don't overwhelm you. Because you can very easily, if you're passionate about something, just go right off the deep end and lose people. I have to be very, very careful. I can do two hour long monologues on Sumerian kings. Like, <laughs> I know, I know nobody's interested in three hours of why we changed from oxen to horse for plowing fields. I know this. <laughs> and I keep, I keep, a, I keep a rein on that. I could do about three, three minutes of that. I... But if I do light, funny anecdotes. Yeah. They're good at dinner. They're not the boring, oh, I hate this person. Oh, this person's driving me crazy. Oh, complain, complain, complain weather which I'm not interested in. I like learning stuff. So Consider the Fork is the history of culinary decisions that we make, like when we moved from fire to coal, or when fork became popular, or why we eat with the spoons we eat with, why some things came and some things went, how those evolutionary changes made differences, how it would take considerably longer than initially thought for things to become about, I think it's like a quarter of a century or half a century for the food processes to become a common thing in the kitchen from when it was created hmm. but there was I'm... over a hundred patents for egg whiskers in america and you know what we use now a, a primarily a style from france that was around before <laughs> yeah I, I have a whisk to whisk eggs people i i honestly mostly use a fork yeah yeah <laughs> for but all the whisking that i do where when like the moving from personal personal food daggers everybody carried their own very personalized food knife at their hip you didn't use somebody else's because yours was bejeweled decked trimmed out etched like it was it, it was, was yours. yours and it was sharp as all get out because it could also be a self-defense weapon right to the butter knives we have now that won't cut butter if it hasn't melted on the countertop for two hours and she discusses that evolution and how we got there. Like, I find that fascinating. And she on, does it in, like, 40 minutes. I'm on, like, the history of boiling food. Yeah! Isn't like, that the cool? most boring way of cooking food is now the most fascinating <laughs> thing in my life today. Boiling food. food. Yeah. Yeah. Pots and pans. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I, I was riveted. Boiling food without pots. Riveted. Riveted. <laughs> I just, what? I love when people what? can... Just make a subject fascinating. Yeah. Yeah. So, oh, I'm almost done. And now that I know that Diana's listening to it, because I super seriously bullied her into 
good. I'm trying not to give you daily quips because I want you to discover it on your own. And we finally made it to the fork. And I'm well over chapter seven. We finally <laughs> made it to the fork, people. And I would like to know where my berry spoon is. Berry fork is, sorry. Uh, I, I would like a berry fork. I now know why silver knives were a thing. Why they don't use silver chopsticks, but they do use... Um, or why some people would use silver chopsticks and we don't use them anymore. The difference between fork and chopstick eating. Like, the differences in the cultures of the food and how you approach eating and stuff. Delightful. That's so cool! This is from a whole angle that you just oh, never thought mind. about. Blows your mind. Anyway, super good. Couldn't, cannot recommend it enough. This is a double recommendation. Oh, so good. So good. So I uh, also finished uh, Feel the Heat, Feel the Burn. It was the latest, it was number nine or number ten in the GA. Yeah, feel, feel, feel the Burn. burn. And the GA. Bring Me Heat. Bring Me Heat. I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> I finished that series, there's more going on, but I've lost interest. So I'm going to move on to a new author. In a day or so, I figure. So that's this is how I do romance novels. I just sort of fall off the end and then I'm over it at some point and we move on. Binge it hard and then done with it? The uh, only thing I could see maybe is going to find the one about the two, like the characters in the first book. They're, they're children because they have twins. Okay. I could see reading that story because now across the books, the kids have grown up into adults. And okay. I and I would like okay them I would I would because I would like to see how their mom reacts and how their dad reacts to them falling in love and finding partners. Oh, so I feel okay. like that'll be funny. That'll that'll be funny. So I'd be like okay that one I would do, but not all of them. Like I'm not as interested in a lot of the supplementary characters. I mean we've gotten too far away from the core group now. I was listening to the books to hear about the core characters popping in and out to tell the story, <laughs> to move the the plot line along. Hmm. It's like, no, I'm done. <laughs> I'm out of yarn. What I the... finished my ball. I have to stop knitting now. Okay. You didn't bring a second ball? <laughs> no, I didn't realize I was that close to the end. Poor backup knitting. <sighs> That's okay. We're almost done. Yeah. We're at wool gathering? <clears throat> uh, I have one more knitter Oh, good. So this one's technically a game, but... Oh, let's write the story game. There's not much game to it. You're in a forest and you're walking around. Mm -hmm. I feel like I finished a book rather than a game. So I'm, I'm going to talk about it in literature. Firewatch. It was like a really big deal a few years ago. I didn't really get it. I waited till it was on sale and then I bought it in like the Steam Winter Sale like last year and I finally got around to playing it this past month. It's such a good story. It's just the emotions and the relationships and like and it's the way you respond to people affects the story, so I think I want to play it again and see if I can get it to be different. It's just... I have feels for this story in this game. It was... I highly recommend playing Firewatch for the story. Well, it's all about the story. Like, you literally are just walking around the forest, looking at stuff, and talking to people on the radio. I know, I want to play. It's I'm very excited. so good. I'm going to go look it up. It's so good. And it's not an expensive game either because oh, it's been smart. out for a few years and it's like a 10 hour game. If and... it's good, that's the important part. Yeah. So highly recommend Firewatch. I own Shovel Knight. It's not like I have high expectations <laughs> sometimes. Guys. And I love running around <coughs> with my stupid little knight and a shovel and bashing things over the head with it. Fun. Shovel Knight's fun. Shovel Knight is fun. Okay. So consider the fork. Consider the fork. Dragon book. Bring the, bring the heat. Bring the heat? It's the G.A. Aiken Dragon series books, guys. I read 10 books in less than a month. I can't keep track of the titles. <laughs> and Firewatch. All of these linked in the show notes. Because... Reasons. Reasons. <laughs> words. <laughs> I think I need to be done. <laughs> I'm running out of words. Not running out of thoughts, I'm running out of words, words to express them with. <laughs> that's fair. Uh, I don't think we have much left, do we? I think that's it. That's all I've got on the show notes. Cool beans. Uh, as a heads up, uh, we're moving into November at the end of this week. Hopefully this episode goes up before Halloween. That's always the goal. Um, <laughs> the goal is always try to get up on Wednesday. Sometimes we're not so good at that. Um, we've got the first of November. I'll be casting on for NaNoSwimo, which means I'll be doing, participating in the National Knit a Sweater in a Month Challenge, which is one sweater, one month, 50 stitches, 50,000 stitches. I also quite regularly uh, participate in NaNoWriMo, which is the National Write a Book in a Month, which is the same sort of idea. It's one month, 50,000 words 
challenge. So we'll see how that goes. Um, I don't know if I can do two at once. I might be crazy because the Triwizard Tournament Readathon starts on the first two, on the 31st. If you stop doing any kind of like regular work, you might have time. What regular work? I work for myself. Somehow I don't think a readathon is is part of regular work. I don't know. It counts for the book blogging and Touché. the reviewing because okay. I have a bunch of my TBRs that I have potentially for whatever dragon I get assigned uh, when we're done watching the movie. Uh, fit in with things I have to have written and reviewed to be paid for. Okay, well. So it's how you stack your hobbies, people. It's how you stack your hobbies. Hobby stacking. Hobby stacking for the wind. <laughs> um, and there's other things like when my, my parents are in town, even though I really still can't cut heavier materials and stuff, my mom said to pull out the templates and stuff and she would help me do the cutting and stuff that I, I can't do right now. So I'll be able to get some sewing done next weekend. Like there's some things that I'll be able to do. And dad's going to help me do some of the heavier prep lifting and stuff because I can do this, but I can't yet pick up a coffee cup in my left hand. And I am left hand dominant. Hard left hand dominant. I am no, I'm uh -huh. no good at doing things with my right hand. So that's it. You should watch me try to brush my hair with my right hand. It's sad. <laughs> sad, people. So that's fine. Uh, also, as of the 1st of November, uh, WTF Nitty, Levi, we love Levi. Yeah, we do. He's so cute. WTF Knitting <laughs> Podcast. He's such a better singer than I am. I'm going to stop now. It's sad. Uh, <laughs> he does a 100-day craft along, which is a big commitment. And he sort of, I think the general recommendation is average like 15 to 30 minutes a day that you're going to work on something every day for 100 days. Seems distinctly doable it's a great way to approach a really big project because you've hunched like you've munched it down to actually manageable bite-sized pieces so i'm hoping that my wrist my wrist it's my thumb guys it's just the joint right beside my wrist feels good enough in like less than seven days <laughs> to start crocheting again because there is that i showed it to diana and if i start working on it i'll show it to you guys a crocheted afghan pattern that looks like a quilt it's gorgeous and i want that to be my 100 day challenge i want to work on those squares for 15 or 30 minutes a day i don't intend to have the blanket done because i want it to be a bed size blanket but i want to have a bulk of it done in 100 days like i want to be able to go listen look i'm two-thirds done i'm over halfway done like i'm ready to start thinking <clears throat> about borders and stuff like I want to be at that point where I'm like, huh, I've done this so well and so long I can do it in my sleep. Like, I really am super excited by that. So I'm definitely doing that. And then other than that, it's just gearing up for January and in our case, the Grinch along. I know Dunder Knits is going to do a blame Dunder Knit along shortly. I'll probably participate in that too, just because I can. That's Vicariously Knitting. Right. That's the Swear Family podcast. Okay. I will yeah. link to these podcasts. She's like, curiously, so and She's Levi's so podcast. So cool! Yeah, 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 yeah. Link them up. I think we're good. Otherwise, that's it. That's all. Diana's over caffeinated. I have to go close the window because it's cool here now. Okay. And I'm done my row. So I will say until next week. I'm Jocelyn, and I'm Diana. And no matter where your week takes you, don't, don't forget, forget to knit. knit.